So when Lego started designing Ordeal of Fire, I think they were kind of headed in the wrong direction from the start. It was the introduction of CCBS for Hero Factory, and there's definitely a lot to be said for that. But at the same time, one of the gimmicks that Lego introduced for this line was not great, in my opinion. And it's in some ways kind of the selling point of the wave, at least for the heroes. You see, the heads of each of the heroes are made up of three distinct pieces. This piece right here, as well as this headpiece. And I like the designs of both of these. This is a fairly generic design, but it does feel like an improvement on the Glatorian head that came before it. And this design, also quite generic, but in a way that's unoffensive, in a way that feels collectible. Like, I want a lot of this piece so that I can build my own characters in whatever colors I want. But the third piece here that makes this offensive is the intermediate. You see, these two pieces cannot connect together without something in between them. They're essentially a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They need something between the two slices of bread. In this case here, it is a piece of headgear, and that headgear has bars on both sides of it, allowing for the top of the head, the cap if you will, to go down onto the head piece and allowing you to make a combination. But it means that you have to use the headgear in order to connect these two. There are pieces now that exist in LEGO that you can definitely do this with, but at the very least when these were introduced, that was not the case. And this is a problem to me because if you didn't want to use that headgear, you're basically out of luck. You couldn't use any of these pieces, honestly, at least not until later when they designed other pieces for this head specifically. But what about that helmet? That design to me is quite nice because it's unoffensive, because it is generic. It would have been so fun if this piece was backwards compatible for something like the Glatorian heads that it could be used directly on top of them. Obviously, it would need a little bit of modification for that to work. And we all know that the Glatorian heads are not perfect. They definitely have their issues. For one thing, people have issues with the fact that this is fully transparent. I don't mind that quite so much, but what I do mind is the fact that this socket here is awful. It's absolute trash, and the socket here is superior in every way. That said, though, even if I wanted to swap out my Glatorian heads for this, I can't, because there is no axle hole here either, and no piece to bridge those gaps. It's quite unfortunate, honestly. So what would my suggestion be? Well, a couple of things. First off, I would be modifying this piece or maybe building a hybrid of this piece with the Glatorian head so that there is an axle hole at the top. Number two, I would just put an axle at the base of this. You can see I've modified one of those uh, accessory pieces, if you will, to actually allow these two pieces to come together without the accessory in there. And then you can see on the sides here, we have that opening that's still available, and that would be conveniently sized to around the size of an axle. So if we take this piece right here and bisect it, just cut it right down the middle, removing this double pin connection here completely, and disconnecting this back end, you are left with a left and a right side of the headgear. And I like this more because it actually ends up being way more useful too, and fewer molds technically. Because if Lego made these pieces just a little bit more useful, let's say, they could make a left and right variant out of each of these pieces. And for example, on the back of one, they could have a scope on the front, they could have this grill piece here. And then all you would need to do is just take it off, flip it around and put it right back on the head. Now the scope is in the front and the grill piece is in the back, right? Or you can swap it to the other side. Now the scope is on the opposite side. It leads to a lot more customization for you. And was that not the selling point of early Hero Factory anyway, for you to create your own robots? Like that just makes sense to me. So the fact that this was not the case really bothers me. Now, here's the thing. I do have one of these helmets that is from a bootleg set with an axle on the inside. And I also have a Glatorian head that is from a bootleg set with an axle on top. All the connections are the same, although better, because look at that. They fixed that axle. Thank God. Look at that. It's so gorgeous. That said, though, this has the axle connections on the side. So it has the connections we could have used for this, allowing you to connect that headgear to the side. Now, these two pieces are not really designed to go together super well because, again, this is made for an accessory that goes underneath the helmet but then goes around the head. It's really bizarre. The connection's kind of lame, and it means that the eyes don't line up here. But if you pretend that they did line up for a moment, this also leaves us one other thing we can do with this piece because we have addressed the front here being a pretty good design overall, and the sides with the openings on them is nice. But what about the back? The back here doesn't do anything. It's not offensive either, but it's not 
doing anything special. It can go over the head here, and that's cool, I guess. You could use it as a helmet, but it's fairly bland on its own, so maybe you could add some little extra strips of plastic off to the side here to just kind of protect the size of the face and highlight or sort of encompass the main face on it. Very similar to a lot of Bionicle helmets from the end of the Glatorian era, right? So the fact that you could have gotten a helmet out of this that's both backwards and forwards compatible, a head that's slightly more usable than the proprietary connection that it ended up having, and on top of that, accessories that you can just swap around left to right, flip front to back, meaning that every accessory can basically be four pieces, is kind of insane. Because LEGO spent a decent amount making six unique molds for these, when really all they needed to do was make, I don't know, three? If they wanted to make six full molds, that would give you access to 12 different items, one on the front and back of each of them, and since you can swap sides with each of them so that they can be mirrored, that essentially gives you the ability to make 24 different combinations of these pieces, right? I probably have my math wrong, but bear with me. It means that if I wanted the scope here on the front side, I don't have to have it necessarily on the left. I can also have it on the right. Now, yes, it would mean that this microphone goes away, or maybe that's a different assembly entirely. And maybe there could even be connections on these themselves so that you can connect the microphone from the bottom or from the top. Whatever the case may be, give us a sprue. And yeah, we're, we're having fun. Anyway, get ahead of myself. At the end of the day, there are six colors of this piece, about a billion of the head that goes with it, which is nice. I do like that. But we could have gotten more if it had just been a little bit more useful. Wouldn't that have been great? Anyway, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe. It really helps the channel out and it gets us closer to 4,000. And as always, you can check out links for Discord, Instagram, and Patreon, all of which are down in the description below. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.